it's a uh, it's a great honor to share the, the same podium as uh, you know there are several thought leaders they were here and they have been talking and we are the first time presenter here so all those people you know agile india conference facilitators sponsors as well as attendees uh, you know we really really thank uh, for giving us an opportunity and as we all know the lock to feed right if you don't find a value in this or if you find a more value in attending other sessions feel free to you know uh, you know leave the uh, you know this particular training and please do so with you know with you know all the students okay with that uh, this is about infrastructure as a code as a service right. okay okay <laughs> So this is this will be a primarily a demo. So we will get to the demo as quickly as possible. We, before that, we will kind of have some kind of understanding of what the DevOps is. Uh, so that's that's a plan for here. And uh, let me introduce the, the speakers here. I'm a Srini Kariam. I am a agile practitioner. I'm an uh, um, entrepreneur. I <laughs> I have helped several companies to in their agile transformation. So I started my journey along with me is uh, Mohan. Uh, Mohan is a DevOps practitioner as a solution, uh, you know, uh, uh, architect, as well as Umesh. Uh, Umesh is also a DevOps practitioner, solution architect. Uh, I come from Chicago, and our friend uh, Mohan comes from Coimbatore, and uh, Umesh comes from Noida. All right. Uh, so, why did we actually uh, do this, right? So, what prompted us to do something like this? So, we have been in the previous uh, company. We have been part of an organization where we used to spend a at least a Half a day to one day in the release deployment process. How many of you have can you know relate to this? You know, some of you, right? And then after that, right after that, we have a uh, this war room concept. At least a day or two to get the system stabilized. So yeah, you know what? You know, but every problem has an opportunity. So we kind of worked as a team and then started making some improvements. So that so rooted in that experience, what we kind of found is okay if we have to do this, why you know. Uh, we want to show people, you know, the teams can make a, uh, you know, progress as long as it's a one-step process. You don't get the transformation all at once. You don't, you don't make the, you know, one leapfrog. You have to take steps. In order to do that, we have to show the developers or the teams what steps they need to do. So our, the, our uh, motto was that let us show something that the team can take it in their, you know, that they, they can use it. Right? That was the thing. So we were practicing on, so uh, last, uh, Agile India, so we all met together and then we started iterating on it. So this is a result of whatever the work we have done. Okay, so with that. So the agenda is uh, DevOps infrastructure as a code, as a service, a quick overview and Azure key, con key concept and then provision infrastructure as a demo. This is where we will spend a lot of time and comparison between AWC and uh, GCP. Right? With that, so a quick poll. Uh, <laughs> How many of you, with a show of your hands, how many of you spend time doing development primarily? primarily? Um, I would say, you know, maybe one third. How many of you are spend most of your doing ops work? A similar thing? All right. Okay, in terms of the cloud usage, how many, you know, show of hands, how many of you are 100% on cloud? All right couple of people how many of are you using somewhere in between you know okay none at all all right it's okay. and what you know if you are using you know cloud how many of you are using azure all right okay and aws few people all right and google people or right. any others you know okay yeah. Uh, so, how, of those people who are using, how many are you actually practicing the DevOps infrastructure as a code as a practice? Good. We have people. So, probably you could also speak here, right? <laughs> uh, so, uh, thank you for that. And, all right. So, that in, if we talk about the, you know, um, DevOps, you know, development teams are embracing agility. You know, they are moving faster and faster, like in our case, we were, you know, we were developing in the sprints, but boom, it stops there. And then we spent several, you know, uh, uh, days to get it out to production. And then the reason is that we all know, like, you know, like we have several speakers are talking about each teams are competing against each other. One team is, you know, change. The other team is about, you know, keeping it, uh, you know, uh, keeping it running, right? 
so and then we do operate in a development and operation scheme silo so but at the end of the day it doesn't matter whether you're a dev or, dev or ops we are not helping the business to drive the uh, you know results we are not producing value that as an agile transformation we promise the you know business to do that so we need to find a a focus to our focus to eliminate the bottlenecks so we are talking about the uh, in the keynote speaker reduce the friction how can we do to reduce the friction so if we if we look at the system as a as a whole and identify what is what is causing us the friction and what is stopping us not to move forward then you know we all can as part of it you know uh, as a team right so so there is a quick video i'm not going to show that so let's see so here is the DevOps, uh, you know, Gartner models. I kind of say this: this is a journey, right? So we have uh, there is a lot of, you know, when you talk about the uh, DevOps journey, we have a people's aspect of it, we have a technology aspect of it, and we have a you know process and culture aspect of it. So and in order to, to uh, complete, you know, in order, in order for this to happen, there are several things that the team needs to do. So what we used to do is that we used to do uh, use it as a kind of, you know, refer uh, as a as a conversation so okay where do we need to focus on right so the, so a lot of there is a lot of work has been done in this area you know continuous integration automated builds you know uh, test automation but not much has been done in this aspect of it infrastructure as a code so that is where we want to spend a little bit of time understanding of it so <coughs> so devops cycle hopefully we can appreciate at the end of the demo you know what uh, in order for so development Development is working on it. We need to have a provision where we can get the changes to uh, production as quickly as possible, where we can monitor it, and then the feedback goes back to the backlog, backlog, and then continuously, uh, you know, uh, improve on it. All right. So with that, okay. A quick definition. So infrastructure as service, infrastructure as a core. These are completely two different, you know, uh, you know, concepts. Infrastructure service, you know, you can get the, you know, you have a service provider where you could, you know, request, a, you know, uh, as in this case, you know, the storage network, the capability provided to the consumer is to provision processing storage networks and other fundamental computing resources where the consumer is able to deploy and run arbitrary software which can include operating system applications. So, that's from uh, Wikipedia, and then the infrastructure as code is process of managing and provisioning computer data centers through machine readable definition files. All right. So with that, all right. So we'll quickly go on to the demo. So Mohan is going to come and uh, you know start talking about this. All right. So a couple of things about Azure concepts. Uh, Azure Resource Group. This is a logical group to manage the resources. Of the resources can be your virtual machine storage, virtual network databases, load balancer, virtual ne network active directory, and monitoring, etc. All right. So what are we going to do, right? So here, what we are going to provision. So we are going to have two windows. So this is the you know it, network diagram that we are going to uh, demonstrate, where in which we will have two Windows servers with IIS. We would have a uh, SQL server. We will have a load balancer, and the network security. A group we will configure the network security rules as well as vnets and two subnets all right so these are the list of the steps that we will go through as we configure this so you when mohan is going to show this these are the steps we have broken down in our you know powershell scripts and then these are available in github we will be able to you can able to go back and then look at them right so the steps um, is you know, be able to log in, create a virtual network subnets, creating a VMs, create security network groups, and you know, configuring the port, availability sets, create VMs within, uh, create VMs within the availability set, configure uh, IS load balancer, and uh, link the virtual machines to load balancer, create network security group from a DB server, and create and provision SQL server. So we come from a development background. As part of this journey, we learned a lot about how the infrastructure operates. So, and this this particular demo is not about a recommendation of what tools to use, but just to show, you know, um, the uh, DevOps practice as infrastructure as a good. Okay. Uh, with that, I think Mohan, I think it's time for us to show the demo. Hello, guys. Um, good morning, everyone. So, as I, as Trini was like, you know, like little bit explaining about. Uh, 
devops and um, how like you know that we can make the infrastructure also provisioned like same as like you know how we provision code right to the um, code to uh, the releases so the same kind of thing like you know we can do it with the infrastructure as a code as well so with so the, our experience like you know as he said we come from like you know a lot of uh, development and um, and process background so with that like you know we apply so we see the gap right like um, generally we say see the gap in some of our the companies we worked on we worked on in a company uh, where where the infrastructure is little bit like you know behind provisioning the vms and things like that so if you go and ask for a vm right so they might take like you know 2 to 3 months like you no know, that is very common and uh, with that like you know what happens is the inception of idea is like you know killed there itself right so what how we can like you know do that so how we can do more innovation what kind of uh, things were needed so that's where like you know when you think about cloud and azure practices right so that's what i see so any startup company or a mid range company they can easily spin up an environment in the cloud and they can transfer their ideas quickly like you know into action so that is a very biggest um, thing for any new startups or mid range uh, very like you know, or like you know any anyone who is interested in working in the iot of devices so people have lot of ideas so they create like you know a uh, lot of apps for that matter so how like you know an individual also can take take this and then they can move ahead so that is also like you know one of the uh, things we would like to show so it is not only for big companies like you know where they have a very big background of infrastructure but like you know as any any individual as well as well we can go and take this idea and then we can approach it so with that mindset like you know we are going to show some of the uh, some of the first thing like you know some of the features of uh, azure and then how we can provision all these things like you know we are we are going to talk about the vms and the vnet subnets <laughs> using the ui and how this can these things can do it through the powershell scripting and also we are going to show how this can be done using the json templates and then we are going to at the end of the day the delivery is important right continuous delivery is the one which we look forward so that's why we are doing all these things so how we can do that delivery uh, using the continuous uh, integration so we'll we'll show the tfs release management tool and then we can different stages how this can be uh, de deployed so we'll we'll end there right so that's the idea so to start with uh, i can quickly show okay let's start with this diagram right <clears throat> so the one one more issue um, i mean one more like you know the common uh, thing we have seen uh, with working with like you know the companies was the infrastructure team doesn't like you know uh, trust the developers right in how many companies infrastructure trust developers 100% and give their servers to them right it's very hard right they won't do that they say like you know the servers is for maintenance for the infrastructure team alone right not for the developers right so that that friction is always there um, and then as a development team we don't also like you know look forward to see what is behind the wall right i am developing an application i want to see how the infrastructure look like does anyone like you know any any team development team ask the question first what i am developing against right what i am developing against so that that is a gap exist now as well so we have to how we can bring uh, bring that together so when we any project start on sprint zero or day zero we need to know the infrastructure i will i will tell you like you know i have seen in couple of uh, the experience i have in the companies i worked on so what happened is so when the project ended uh, what happened is they want to improve some performance right so now obviously so something like you know not working right so the infrastructure team is giving an idea saying that okay then like you know you please go for uh, uh, a round robin instead of a sticky sessions right so that is maintained in the load balancer so the unfortunately they couldn't do so the reason is like you know the development team uses lot of uh, for example in a web application they use lot of session states so that itself like you know says that without sticky sessions it won't work at all so even to change a normal configuration in the in the infra in the it 
uh, load balancer the application doesn't allow it's not the infrastructure issue right it's an app issue so this happened like you know couple of companies which i like you know worked for the past 17 years so this is like an obvious like you know thing to to see that we have to look into the infrastructure diagram upfront on day one or sprint zero so that's the idea. Yeah, just to add it, so what it is going to drive is that okay, let's write the code that actually can provision infrastructure. That's where we're talking about. So and then it also brings the common understanding of you know infra and the dev are actually looking at the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Steve. So that so from the from a development standpoint, right? Uh, so this is what happened. Like you know, so this is the same thing. Like you know, I worked for a, in, as an architect in an uh, application, and I went to the infrastructure team like you know something is not uh, running fast enough and then they showed a diagram and like you know it's like a blueprint of a very big building in the world like you know i couldn't know, i couldn't like you know find out what is that right so the i so the idea is like you know development as some someone from the development background no need to know the every aspect of that but they want to know some of the important aspect of it for example the diagram which is you're showing here right this is from uh, Microsoft templates, I will be showing the demo. So they want to know at least like, you know, so what is an virtual network means, right? And then what are the sub networks and why a database sub network is not exposed to the internet when it is within like, you know, uh, a different subnet for that matter. And then how a VMs are placed in an availability set and uh, uh, so that like, you know, it is exposed to the internet and then how it is export using the network security groups and what ports needs to be open and things like that so we'll quickly uh, i'll show the demo so this is the infrastructure we are going to like you know look at so as any normal like you know infrastructure uh, provisioning the script starts something like this um let me see. Let me begin up, right? So if you are a developer, you should be able to completely, you know, relate to what it is doing. You know, um, you have an uh, an Azure command that takes some parameters and then it performs an action. And then uh, the infrastructure people are familiar with this kind of scripting language. So here we are looking at the common kind of language, right? So we will, we kind of listed what are the 12 different steps to get to the infrastructure diagram. So this particular the PowerShell scripts has the steps that, you know, when you execute a particular snippet of it, it is going to perform that particular action. Okay. So before that, I quickly like, you know, show Azure, right? So lot, some people are not familiar with um, uh, Azure, right? Some people are not in the uh, cloud, right? Or at least like, you know, two thirds of the people. Are not in the cloud so this is um, so if we go to portal.azure.com so this is the dashboard is the first one like you know we get into and um, so there is something called resource group so that's what like you know we want to uh, know first like how i can place all these resources uh, all the resources in uh, meaning um, the virtual network subnets and the vms and the everything so the everything what, 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 is what you're saying is that Entire, you know, pro the architecture. It's it's in that particular resource group, right? Everything yes, yeah. Under, under the resource group, so you can have multiple resource group. You know, so the how you can organize it is it is based on the product, project, whatever it is. You can create a resource group. Yeah. So because that's a good point, right? So we have to plan, right? Plan the infrastructure, how it needs to look like in the cloud. Uh, same as like you know how it looks like in our on premise. So now nowadays, like you know, it's very common to have hybrid hybrid system as well. So people definitely like you know not going to put everything in the cloud at first place at all. So because I like, you know, I also don't do that. Not of companies don't do. So they first like you know try to move infrastructure as a service. Right? That's the first thing they do. When we say like you know cloud providers, Microsoft provides lot of different models of like you know modes of giving the service. One is infrastructure as the service. You keep. I mean we provide like you know uh, a place where you can set up your infrastructure, same as your uh, on premise and then you guys manage like you know whatever you want it so this is control right you have full control over the environment where like you know you can uh, you can manage all your uh, applications so right that's what i go for I so the yeah. way that we kind of uh, end up with this is that we created this using azure portal and then once we have the uh, azure portal we got an idea what you know what needs to be done then we wrote the the code in order to get to the desired state so um, yeah, 
so that, that is a resource group right that's what uh, that's what the first thing like uh, we need a control right so once we i mean once we have crossed that uh, cloud provisioning of infrastructure as a service and everyone is comfortable within the company then they will move on to platform as a service and and like you know software as a service and and then like you know even serverless functions so those things come later right so this is the first step like you know for any anyone to safely like you know put their uh, leg into the cloud but definitely like you know cloud is a needed thing now i think we are 25 minutes now let me go yeah, yeah sure so now uh, if you see here right resource group so the whole thing whatever um, uh, we have shown here we we, we have been uh, we can put it in this one resource group so the demo mm, okay so the first thing like you know log in into the um, log into the cloud i mean azure cloud so we call it as a subscription so the account so first thing is like you know before resource group first thing is the account you set up a account in the portal.azure.com so they give like you know lot of uh, uh, credits so you can like you know uh, you can use the resources for that so first thing is account and then like subscription within that resource group so that's the hierarchy so i log in here the similar concept is there in other platforms as well right so uh, you know so these are like you know commands uh, these are all the restful apis that um, microsoft provided to to like you know work uh, to work with uh, the dark cloud uh, infrastructure so so if you can see here right i will explain like you know before it law do this so say it's all like you no know, microsoft verb and noun um, noun model where we say like login azure rm account and then like you know set azure rm account we have to set the, set the subscription for it and then you can create a new resource group so you can say like new azure resource group so you can give the resource group name and the location right so the location is important so whatever like you know closest uh, proximity to the region which we are in for example asia and like you no know, europe and then you also we can pick up that so that's the, like you know the uh, the location here and then we create an um, virtual network that's the first thing just a second it's okay let's i think i have logged in again or i mean i have logged in before so i can uh, can safely run run this so you're running all of them right now yeah so I'm going to run this command. Yeah, it needs to log in. Just a second. so to run all these commands like you now we need to log into the account subscription okay it's logging in so okay good
okay logged in good so next like you know we have to set the um subscription so that is the next command and then like we will create a resource group so the nice thing about this is uh, if we can get to this this would actually become your, your process of you you know build process so once we are ready to um, you know, let's say you build it and you want to have a dynamically create your infrastructure you, you know this your your infrastructure will be created your code will be deployed and you can run the test and you can tear it down also so you are creating the infrastructure at the point in time when it is needed and you are tearing it down yeah so do you think we'll have time to Next. Uh, yeah, yeah i will quickly walk through instead yeah. of running it but the, uh, everything is in the github you can like you know go and run it so this is like you know we are see the start with right uh, we go like you no know, command by command right so that's why um, the i mean anyone can start with it and after that what happens is once it's all stabilized so there is a next version of it which we can go for so that is like you know you can see here that's a modules so any anyone have experience how many have experience with powershell yeah a couple of people so it is very simple like it's not hard it's very simple uh, tool set which you can learn like you know definitely within Three or four days, you can get a good control of like you know what needs to be done. So just to add to some context, right now, if you yeah. go back to the previous script, you have. Yeah. So this script cannot be run multiple times. You know, if it is already created, it fails. So by modularizing the script, so uh, we can have a particular module that you know it says you know uh, that infrastructure and developer can work together. You know, if you want to create a VM, you know, run this particular code snippet, and then uh, the code is out there in your version control system. And then, so that way, your script becomes much more robust, right? Um, so that's what it is going to be. We have refactored this particular, you know, PowerShell script so that it can be run multiple times. So if you can see here, right, the same login. Now it, like, you know, it is put it in the function. And uh, for example, here you can see the resource group. So if you create a resource group, so first it will check, like, you know, whether the resource group already exists. So if it already exists. Then, like, if it not exists, it creates a new one. If it exists, it gives this handler, right? And then it returns it. So this is like, you know, at the high level, how we can write a function. So this is very simple functions you can write, which from which, like, you know, can manage the infrastructure in a better way. So this they can package together called modules. So everything is a function. So the good thing about function is you can compose. So if suppose, like, you know, I want to create a resource, and we can have, I we have like, you know, a method. Uh, called uh, create vm or and the next one is create virtual network so everything is like you know modularized and then put it in a different functions so whatever we need we can like you know um, we can compose together and then we can create an environment if you are a if you are coming from a development but this is not you know a, a big change right i mean this is as simple as writing some code but in order to do that you have to work with the infrastructure team because they have the understanding of how it needs to be laid out and then together we can create the scripts and then they can they can be part of your uh, ci from the right from the you know uh, day one if, if, if it can be yeah so we can see here right for example like create windows vm so this is like you know um, so it checks like you know whether it has a public ip address and then like it has an network interface and if there is an availability set so availability set makes make sure like you know if if you have like you know more than one vms um, and then something goes down it makes sure like you know it picks up the other one so that that's like you know the availability set and um, so everything the idea is everything modularize and put it in a function for example install ias right suppose we we have a vm and i want to install ias on it right all i have to do is i'll show how it is being composed quickly so if you see here right so this is a simple vm that can be created using the um, powershell functions for example if you see here create resource group right so we can pipe into the next one which is like creating a network so this piping like takes this re result of the creating resource group and put it and give it as the input to the next function so it, the same thing like you know it goes like this so it takes the the output of the previous function and then give us an input of the next function so just think about it right if you really need an infrastructure how long it takes for you to get it 
you know, how many change of uh, approvals you need to go through. And then who needs to do it. This can actually give you the, you know, um, by click of a, a button, right? And where, how you integrate it, it's up to the teams, of, you know, teams, right? So that's the, um, that's the, I mean, that is, that is the key message here is that, you know, you can actually treat your infrastructure as a code itself and then treat like any other code. And then Mohan, so you may want to jump into the project. Uh, yeah, right? yeah. So, So if you can see here, right? Um, so at the end of the day, the idea is like, you know, not to, um, the idea is to uh, do the continuous delivery and then to put it in this pipeline, right? How do I make sure like, you know, my infrastructure also is in the pipeline, right? That's the idea. So here, if you look at it, this is not a just a code for your, uh, a particular project. It has the code for your creating the environment also. So you are treating entire, you know, thing as, uh, uh, you know, as a code here. So this is the uh, PowerShell uh, script that we have. So for example, quickly I'll show. So this one we already seen, right? So infrastructure creation. So this is like, you know, putting everything in a function and then like, you know, it is available here. And then there is one more script where like, you know, we are arbitrarily composing whatever infrastructure we need. Suppose I want, I want two VMs, right? So here we are going to call uh, create Windows VM. Again, we are going to call one more time, create another Windows VM, right? So, this is based on this diagram, guys, right? So, this is uh, this is simple diagram. Now, we have... A second. So, this one. So this is a simple VM, like you know how we can create using the functions which I already have. So this is in the GitHub. So we'll share that uh, code as well, and I will show quickly, like you know where where it all comes together. So it all comes together. Um, so now we are going to see the pipeline. Uh, the release pipeline, how it is, all, how it all come together. Just a second. So the other other thing you can think about, right? Uh, so how how can I like you know? create an environment on the fly and then like do some testing and then tear it down because when you say like you know cloud providers so it's all charging right it's based on pay as you as you go so whatever the compute power and uh, the infrastructure we use so we are we are going to pay for that uh, so how i can like you know quickly create an env environment and uh, work with that and then how i can quickly tear it down so it is also a good hygiene where like you know um, that kind of environment you can like you know create it anywhere. So that is also a good thing there. So it's coming here. So I can show I can show like you know one more thing like you know the source control. So where where <coughs> IT persons uh, now they won't they will maintain their own uh, the codes like you know in, it's not version control then basically right so it persons not used to, used to that kind of version control they use like you know to running like you know the scripts in uh, uh, whenever like you know there is a need right so there is no proper version control tooling available we talk to several it folks and how do you yeah. manage your scripts and everybody is saying i have my own scripts so yeah they do it but you know but there is no centralized repository for it so by by you know by actually enforcing some of the patterns like this, we will have some centralized, you know, version control. Yeah, we can quickly see here, right? So you can have like, you know, even the infrastructure code within that uh, source control, and then 
based on the projects we can like you know get it like whatever is needed so the infrastructure the code and the um and all the infrastructure code and with this application everything stays together in one place so that is as a unit we can take it to anywhere so that is one of the uh, best thing can happen yeah internet is yeah. so what we we could see is that you will have a release pipeline yeah, and then the release pipeline has the build steps. That's where we want to. So, you know, when a developer checks in, how how things will be. Yeah. No, no, it's internet slow generally. Okay, I will show one more thing. Meanwhile, you can see the JSON as well. So, if it is hard to code, right, using the PowerShell, there is one easy option. They have it's available so everything is put it in a json file and uh, suppose like you know we can think about um, <clears throat> think about like you know we have an uh, sample solution okay so we have an application suppose we have an application a, a web based application so now how do we add an uh, json service right So there is a project type in Visual Studio. So if you can go there and add a solution, add a new project. In the cloud, there is something called Azure Resource Group. So we can pick it up. So if you can see here, right? So there are like you no know, lot of templates you can make use of. So I want like you no know, certain level of infrastructure. I want one VM, one SQL Server, or two VMs. And then, like you know, another SQL. So anything you can pick it up, and then uh, once it comes up, then that will be part of your solution itself. And then I will show you, like you know, if you have seen the release pipeline, there are some tasks we can add. It's all it's called like you know Azure create or replace template task. So with that, like you know, we can say that please take this JSON template and deploy it to this environment. So that's what will happen. And one more good thing is, if it is already there, it won't overwrite. So there is something called an incremental model where if it is there, it won't touch it, just like you know, it deploy whatever it is. So the idea is like you know, I am building on an infrastructure, it no need to be in a separate place. So it needs to be in the same place, place where like you know where I develop the code. So it triggers like you know a conversation between the infrastructure and the development team. So that is a good and healthy conversation that is needed so that a better product can be uh, developed and delivered. So that's uh it's still running up. Yeah. We have some of this in the slide. We have the release pipeline. Yeah, let's uh, yeah. go through the release pipeline. So uh, yeah. let's go. So this is where it will. Uh, we will. We will. You know. We will say. Can you talk? Can you talk about this now? Yep. Yeah. So you can see here, right? So this sort of. So we have an um, environment, right? As a dev. So we have to add only the two. These two tasks. First one is like you know Azure. Deployment create or update resource. It takes an input as a JSON and the parameter file, and uh, it develop it creates that uh, Azure environment there. And the second one is the VM. A VM copy it takes our application code and then deploys to that environment. So both together. So that's what it is. Maybe it's uh, just a lunch lunch break. Everybody has and you using their like yeah. Yeah, so we have like you know the parameterization is possible using the parameter uh, file. Another file there will be two files actually. One is they provide a JSON template file. So there is one more file called the parameters. It it goes together. So any changes you can like you know make in the parameter and any drift you can handle within these parameters. So you can be a separate file. So if you ask ask about the change control, if you're looking at the traditional change control. Um, Using our so you would treat your infrastructure code changes like an application code changes, 
and everything is tracked using whatever the branching strategy that your team has coming, you know, committed to. So that is what we have seen. Yeah, we will maybe we'll quickly show you after you know um, once it comes up. Yeah, taking some time. You can go through the remaining uh, slides. Yeah. So what we essentially, yeah, you can do the same thing with uh, you know infrastructure as a service, but it is not scalable. It is manually prone. But if you do use some kind of infrastructure as a core, then and you build into the release pipeline, it can be scalable. So you can use one of the, any one of the you know cloud platform and um, use the uh, capabilities that are provided with that. So when you compare with uh, other cloud providers, uh, you know what we uh, our observation has been, you know most of these provide a similar capabilities. Uh, um, I think uh, um, like we kind of listed down, uh, you know what. You know what is the you know uh, under each one of the category what is it is called between Azure Google Cloud and as well as AWS you can find them in our uh, slides. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah okay yeah, sorry yeah so we kind of listed down uh, the different um, you know features that are available in between uh, Azure Google Cloud platform and AWS um, so you will find this in the uh, PDF that we will be posting. So I know uh, we have not covered to the most of it, but we would, uh, we, we might, uh, if anybody is interested to see this, we will, you know, hang, we'll, we'll be more than glad to show you in details. Uh, sorry? Yeah. Are there any uh, questions, uh, uh, you know? Hello. Uh, I am interested in uh, how do we do the patch management uh, in infrastructure as a code because there may be a lot of patches which are uh, which will be deployed every day for certain applications and if we are using a base image of an OS or some other uh, applications installed in that image how do we do the patch management? Yeah, yeah so that's a good question actually. So patch management, we didn't try it. So most of the most of the things, like you now we focused on, like you know, from the development standpoint, and patch. Um, I think there are some DSC configurations, DSCs, and nodes that we can provide within the Azure itself. So using that configuration, we'll be like you know providing the patches. So we have the DSC and nodes uh, provisioning available within this UI. So I can show it, like you know, since it's not there. So using that, like you know, the patching can be taken that way. So we can actually schedule the patches, installation of the patches. Yes, yeah, definitely. Okay. Uh, there you. are provisions there. Thank you. Yeah, so IAS will, it, it depends on like, you know, what kind of uh, service we provide. So for example, right, when you select, uh, for example, now here, like, you know, we showed there is an availability set and then you created two VMs, right? We may, and the load balancer. So we make sure like, you know, some, we have some like, you know, web server is always available, right? So how do you scale it, right? There is other templates you can use for that. There is something called VMSS, so you can use that, at, that, that take care of that automatic scaling. Yes, I will give it. 
Thank you guys.